realistically, I mean, how long can Ukraine hold out without ad additional Western support? Is it weeks? Is it months? And, and what is the, the long-term strategy? I know you talked about it being a, a difficult year, given the, the struggle to regain much of the territory uh, that, that Russia has seized. Thanks. So, Courtney, thanks. Um, first, to emphasize something that, that you said. Other than the supplemental request that the President has made of Congress, there is no magic pot of money that we can draw from. The assistance, the support uh, that we have designated for, for Ukraine, that is running out. It's running down. We are nearly out of money uh, that, uh, that we need, and we're nearly out of time. I can't put a, a precise date on it, but that's the direction that this is moving in, which underscores the urgency of getting the supplemental budget request through. We have made uh, a real investment in Ukraine's future, in its freedom, uh, and it would makes no sense to me that we would now uh, renege on that investment, um, having already done so much and having already put Ukraine in a position where it can not only survive but actually thrive going forward. And we have a very clear plan, as I said, to make sure that Ukraine can stand on its own two feet, militarily, economically, democratically, so that these levels of support and assistance will no longer be necessary. But we have to uh, help Ukraine get through the next period of time, uh, get through this winter, uh, get through the spring and summer. Uh, I'm also um, focused on the fact that they have their own, uh, own plans to continue, not only to deter the Russian aggression, but uh, to uh, continue to take back territory that was seized from, from them by Russia, uh, as you know. They've taken back more than 50 percent of the territory that Russia uh, took in February of uh, 2022, um, and that's going to be an ongoing effort. But the most important thing is, as I said, making sure that we get Ukraine to a place where it can stand on its own feet. And we see that. Um, it is there before us, but we have to continue uh, to provide the support to get them to that place. And I want to emphasize two things again, because it, it bears repeating every single time. One. This is not just the United States alone doing it. It's the United States and dozens of other countries with better burden sharing than I've seen in any other uh, crisis that I've uh, been involved in over 30 years. I mentioned this before. We've provided about $70 billion to Ukraine over the last couple of years. Our allies and partners, more than $110 billion. So they are more than picking up their share of the burden. Second, as I mentioned before, um, Virtually all of the security assistance that we've provided to Ukraine and the security assistance that would be in that's in the supplemental budget request that gets invested right here in the United States. That's where it's spent. Um, and that not only helps uh, procure the, uh, the weapons that Ukraine needs, um, it provides good jobs here in the United States. It builds our own defense industrial base. So in many ways, this, this is a win-win for us. Um, and it's why I would hope um, Congress acts and acts quickly. And again, as I said before, we know who uh, will be happy if, for whatever reason, this budget request does not go through. Um, and they're sitting in Moscow, they're sitting in Beijing, they're sitting in Tehran. Uh, 